friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise. Or am I? I am. But how could you be sure? What if I told you that there is a species of snake that no matter what part of the world you live in might be hiding undetected in your house at this very second? This species can thrive in many climates and is very likely the most widely distributed snake in the entire world, living right under our noses and almost no one knows they're there. Let's go. Snakes have wriggled their way into just about every ecosystem we've got. And as a result, you can find snakes on every continent that isn't Antarctica. And except for Ireland, Iceland, New Zealand, and a few other island nations, there are native snakes in every country in the world. Some species or families have pretty big ranges. Garter snakes, for example, can be found all across North America. The European adder has the largest naturally occurring range of any snake, stretching across Europe and Asia from the Atlantic to the Pacific Oceans. Thanks to humans, some snakes have been introduced to new areas and are thriving, like the reticulated and Burmese pythons in Florida, but you're not gonna get invasive retics in Michigan, yeah? Invasive species tend to be contained to a limited ecosystem that meets their specific needs. The subject of today's video isn't so limited by such mundane concerns as the right environment. They are on a whole other level. And it's not this guy, by the way. This is Sherman, my Kenyan sand boa, and he's a poor analog to today's awesome snake. But he's the closest I've got. You'll see. And also, he's pretty cute. The Bromney blind snake has the record for the most widely distributed snake in the world. Originally from Africa and Asia, they can now be found in over 100 countries on every continent except, of course, Antarctica. Even though they originated in the tropics, they do just fine in northern climates too, with specimens observed as far north as northern Europe and Ontario, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and BC in Canada. They can be found across all of Southeast Asia, Australia, the Middle East, uh, across Africa, Europe, a little bit of South America, the Caribbean, Central America, and in every US state except Alaska. Yes, even Hawaii, apparently. These snakes are everywhere, but I'm willing to bet that you might not have heard of them. And if you have, you probably have never actually come across one, have you? But they're everywhere. How can that be? I'll tell you how it can be. First and foremost, they are almost entirely fossorial, rarely ever venturing above ground. You are very unlikely to have one dart across your path while you're out for a walk, and even if they did, you probably still wouldn't notice them because they are tiny. The Brahmini blind snake is the world's smallest snake species, only getting to about two to four inches in length. And if you do happen to see this tiny snake, gardening or digging would be the most likely scenario to find one. There is a very good chance that you'd dismiss it as an earthworm because, well, they look exactly like earthworms. These adorable little noodles, not this guy, the other ones, they're both pretty adorable, have a blunted head and a nubby tail. It sounds like I'm describing this guy. These adorable little noodles have a blunted head and a nubby tail with itty bit of little hardened spur. Their eyes are adorable and mostly decorative. They are not completely blind as their name would suggest, but they are just about as close to blind as you can get without, you know, not having eyes. They can sort of detect changes in light intensity and that's about it. They are non-venomous and are one of the few snake species that doesn't swallow their prey whole. They feed on ants, termites, and other small invertebrates, which they will nibble apart before eating. So they're mostly blind, tiny, and live in the soil. I think it unlikely that they travel the world burrowing underground like the monsters in Tremors. They're not kept as pets. I'm sure someone has kept them as pets somewhere but generally speaking, they're not pets. They aren't really food either, so we're not dealing with escapees from the food trade. So how is it that they have taken over the whole world? Before I answer this important question, I'd like to ask a favor. If you'd be so kind, could you please give that little thumbs up button a little click? That tiny act is actually one of the biggest things you can do to help out my channel. Well, anyone's channel, really. You've made it this far, so there must be something that you liked, right? Why not subscribe while you're at it? And while I've got you here waiting in suspense to find out what makes these snakes, not these snakes, the Bromney blind snakes, great globe trotters, I'd also like to share my sincere thanks to my patrons on Patreon. Here's some now. 
Through the support of these awesome people, I can build better enclosures for my reptiles. I have an amazing one that I just finished that these guys already know about. I can go to more expos and keep making videos that I hope you like. And because of their support, these fine folks also get behind the scenes content, merch discounts, I have merch if you didn't know, and more. Head on over to patreon.com slash allcanadianreptilegirl to see what's available. Thanks. Okay, back to it. The clue to how the Brahmini blind snake has traversed the globe is in one of their more colloquial names, the flower pot snake. Through the horticultural trade, they have hitched rides and flower pots and clumps of soil around plant roots exported from their native range. Their tiny size and fossorial nature allows them to go undetected, which is why, as I referenced at the top of this video, you might have one at this very moment chilling in one of your potted plants in your house or on your patio or maybe planted in your garden. But don't worry, they're completely harmless and unlike many invasive species, these guys are actually pretty helpful. Eating creepy crawlies, often considered pests, and they don't outcompete native species. Speaking of pests, scientists have observed other species taking advantage of the blind snake's diet and behavior to their benefit. Now, the subject of these observations were actually Texas blind snakes, a larger species of blind snake, but they fill an identical niche as the Brahmini blind snake. So presumably it could apply to them too. And the story is so cool that I hope you'll forgive a bit of a cognitive leap here. Researchers studying screech owls found blind snakes living in many of the owl's nests. Mama owls will sometimes feed snakes and other reptiles to their chicks, but they will typically kill them first before giving them to their babies. Now, sometimes the chicks would catch the snakes and eat them, but they often would escape and burrow into the bottom of the nest. Because the mom didn't kill these snakes before dropping them in, like they do with every other prey item, one could presume that having them in the debris at the bottom of the nest was their plan. But why? Great question. The researchers thought so too and started investigating. What they found was that fledgling owls in nests with blind snakes had significantly lower mortality rates and grew faster and larger than fledglings in nests without blind snakes. Bird nests make a great home for a lot of things that aren't great for baby birds. Biting insects, parasites, insect larvae, all things that can stress out or harm growing baby owls, and all things that the blind snake likes to eat. The blind snake gets a buffet and the babies get to enjoy a childhood free of parasites and bug bites. I wish I had a childhood free of bug bites. As a result, they end up growing up bigger, faster, and healthier. How cool is that? Okay, now that we've done our detour on pests, let's get back on track on how the Brahmini blind snake has taken over the world. We know that they can be introduced through the horticultural trade, but shouldn't they be limited to only areas that fit their natural hot environment? No, not really. They seem to thrive best in those areas, but the Brahmini blind snake has been able to tolerate a broad range of ecosystems and temperatures. Look, if they can survive winters in even the southern parts of Canada, they must be pretty durable. They've even been found in places more unusual than Saskatchewan. For example, they have been observed making their homes inside of toad butts. I'm going to say that again. They can make their home inside the butt of a toad not eaten by the toad, and somehow surviving their trip through the digestive tract, not feeding on the toad like a parasite, just kind of crawled in, looked around, and decided it was a good place to hide and made themselves at home. Put up some pictures, throw a pillow or two, and there you go. Cozy. Another key advantage they have to help them establish easily abroad is that Brahmini blind snakes are parthenogenic, meaning they don't need to mate to breed. Every single one of these adorable little snakes is female. Once a year, they lay between four to eight little eggs the size of a grain of rice. A grain of rice. They are reported to be caring mothers that will fiercely guard their eggs that will hatch into four to eight thread-like little daughters. Because they don't need to mate, just one snake can establish a population of snakes that you will never see, but are nonetheless busy burrowing down, aerating our soil and eating pests, and occasionally practicing interior design with the butts of passing toads. And that is incredible. The Brahmini blind snake proves that you don't need fearsome size or strength or big scary claws and teeth to be an incredible survivor. I love these little gals so much and I hope that you enjoyed learning a bit about these adorable noodles too. I think that they are amazing and just another great example of how snakes have adopted strategies to survive in ways that are just 
so different from us super evolved mammals. Thank you so much for watching. You guys rock. And until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye. While I've got you here waiting in suspense to find out what makes these snakes, well not these ones, the Bromney blind snake. Did we already call their name? Okay, this is a mess now. You're waiting for me? Yes. Oh. Wait, I forgot you could see the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for the thing. That was, to, that was supposed to be for like the audience. That was directed at the audience in regards to you. I kind of forgot. and then just let it go. Open it up. Let it go. Let, let it go. go. Can't hold it back let it go. anymore. Uh-huh. What just happened? <laughs>